Do you work with Excel on your daily basis? Do you have to analyze and manipulate data? Perhaps lots of data? Maybe calculate or consolidate the numbers? Creating charts? If you answer yes to any of this, so this video here is for you. I will teach you how to efficiently manipulate data in Excel using one of its most powerful features, Pivot Tables. Hello professionals! This is Joe Rodão and welcome back to another class to improve your data management capabilities. In today's video, you will learn what is Pivot Table about in what it's applicable for and how to use it, as well as a quick overview on the important features on the two exclusive Excel tabs that come up once you click on your Pivot Table, Analyze and Design. You will learn how to use the Pivot Fields pane and each one of its five areas. Towards the end, you will see how charts can be created in just a few clicks out of it and get everything ready for you to better understand your data allowing you to take better decisions as well as creating more professional reports. Interesting, don't you think? If so, please consider subscribing to my channel. It will be an honor to have you around as well as a great motivation for me to continue building courses like this very one here. All right, folks, so to create one element like this is what we're going to learn on this video. But how to create this element? It's simpler than you thought. Let's see this screen. First, you need some data. You need some tabular information like this sample I have here say full of columns and lines it has almost 10,000 rows see down here so you, you need some reference data to start to work with pivot tables then what to do next you come here to insert and you press here on pivot tables once you press here it will bring you this pop-up asking you to confirm what is the data range that you want this pivot table to work on there are two ways that you can use this range the first one is using it fix it like this from A1 to U9995, this is the fixed range, or you can also have a dynamic range in case your ref data changes constantly. So how to create a dynamic range? You click on the column A, on the column, not on the cell A1, on the column A, and drag all the way to the right until the end of the, the last column, until the end of the last usable column. Then, see, it turns into A and U only, without the numbers. That means that everything that exists in column A and column U will be considered. The next thing to consider to pay attention is to where you want it to be created, where you want the Pivot table to be created, to be created in a new sheet or to be created into the existing one here. So for our sample, let's use a new sheet. Then you're gonna have this element here. See, this white element here that represents where your pivot table is positioned with this new pane here on the right being visible. It's called the pivot table field. So now let's switch to the, to the one I have prepared for you here. So here, see the pane back here? It's the exact same thing. I will take everything out to demonstrate you how I can get back to that same shape again using this field here, using this pane here. So see, the same pivot table is here. First of all, what is this pane about? You have five areas here. The first area is the set of columns you have available to use. And then you ask, from where these columns came from? Let's see. They came from here, from the ref data. They are the first line. They are the, the name of the columns. Excel automatically understands them as the title of the column. All right? The next element is filter. What is filter? Filter is a column that you add here like state for instance, and the seed that has changed here on the left, it will determine which filter you want to apply for the whole pivot table. So this filter will determine which data you want to exit on your pivot table, okay? Let's choose Alabama here for the sample and do okay. So far, nothing is visible, right? Then let's see the next one, rows. Rows, whatever column you drag here into rows, it will exit here under the filters, it will show as lines on your pivot table. So let's add here category, and also let's add one more, where is it? Here, segment, all right? So now we have furniture as one category, and segment, and each type of customer into each category. So for furniture, of supplies, and technology, I have customer, corporate, and home office in each one of them. So you guys can see that uh, this, this table is starting getting shape and it's being built dynamically based on your ref data, all right? 
The next thing to talk to you guys is about the last one here, values. What are the values means? And guys, pay very attention to this explanation because this is not the data the way you see on the ref table. This is consolidated information because this is all what the Pivot table is about. About to consolidate information to allow you to do better analysis, all right? Whatever value that I bring into here, it must be summable. Ideally, you bring here numeric values and dates. But if you want to bring text, it also works, but less efficient than numbers, than amounts or dates. So let's add here sales, this one here. So let's drag into here and see, now we have a count of sales. So the number of sales that was done for Alabama, for each one of these segments, sorry, for each one of these categories and each one of these segments. See this dollar sign here? It's, it's wrong because this is count, not sum. So let's change it. Let's click down here on the right. Let's choose value field settings. And from count, let's pick up some. Once we do OK, see, now we have uh, amount, no, uh, cost amount being shown here. So consumer, for instance, the, the segment consumer for the category furniture for Alabama sold $4,000 in this sample here. All right, very good. Let's move on. OK, now I want to see in which city of Alabama were these cells done? So let's grab city and move it here under filter. You guys see a new filter appearing up here, Alabama. But now guys, this is actually a drawback. And let me explain why. Once I added this city here, it's not already being filtered by state, by the first filter. So actually these are all cities that have ever sold something. And all of them here, all across US. So, because this is a lot of um, headache for me to find uh, among all of these, which ones are from Alabama, let's move seed down here into the rows. By doing this, I have my cities, see? Auburn, Decatur, Florence, Hoover, etc. But you guys can see that my five table become too stretched, you know, too long, see? And they're not much useful for me. So I want it to become more like a matrix style. So I will get this city and move up here into columns. So now the columns of this five table became each city. And the information became a lot better to be processed. It should be understandable by you, right? Very nice, don't you think? What about subscribing to my channel now? Such a great idea, right? <laughs> Let's move on. Now we see that uh, Auburn sold in Alabama for, the, for furniture on the consumer segment, $350. In, and then in Florence, $1,800. In Mobile, $1,800. So on and so forth. And here we have the great total per segment. And here the grand total per city. And here the overall grand total. If I now come here to state and change it to, let's say, let's say Arkansas, see? In Arkansas, it was sold to Conway, Fayetteville, Hot Springs, Johannesboro, Little Rock, etc., etc. And this is the grand total. If I choose a bigger state, let's say like uh, Arizona, it's probably the amount of column will, will go, see, it's almost breaking my view area. See, the grand total is right here. If I choose an even bigger state like California, it will go all the way through. See, I need to start dragging to the right to see every city. And uh, this is a lot of information. Now my pebble tail became big again. And for California, this is still not uh, usable anymore. So how do you improve this pebble table to still keep seeing California in a usable way? Let's see the screen. Let's use here pebble table 3 that I prepared for you as a sample. And let's filter here to California. See, I have now my data consolidated by date. See, and here on the right, I have year, quarter, and order date. So I will remove all of this to show you guys how I came to this conclusion. Remember that I had a city here on the columns. See, it was big. So I will simply remove city and bring here order date. Once I add order date, Years and quarters are automatically added because this is a date field. And see here, Excel automatically breaks the orders in the range of period between the first purchase and the last purchase. 
in our case between 2014 and 2017. This is Excel, as usual, being very smart and giving us a great hand. All right. If I press on this plus here, it will break now by quarter. See, quarter one, two, three, four. And if I press on this plus here again, it will break by the month that belongs to this quarter. See, January, February, and March. And in this way, you can play a lot with these five tables and do all the analysis you have to do for your business, your needs to move on. All right. But what if it's more interesting for me to not consolidate by a period of time, but consolidate by numbers, by sales? Let's see how to do it. So instead of order date, I will drag it out, all of this, and I will add the sales column now here. I'll click on sales and drag here. See, my pivot table became huge because every single sale for every single amount now became part of this pivot table. So now, a very nice trick for you guys and consider it bonus one. How to group elements manually on your pivot table. Let's click here Analyze and click here in Grouping Fields. And remember, grouping only works for number type of columns and date type of columns, all right? Don't try to do with text or other type of column because the grouping will not work, all right? Once I click here, Excel will ask me which range I want to consider and it will automatically bring to me the existing range. But if my ref date is dynamic, then I want to put from zero Ending by, let's put here 23,000, all right? Breaking by, let's put here 2,000 each break. Once I do OK, see? Now my pivot table became consolidated again, but now breaking for each 2,000 uh, cells. So each cell that was done between 0 and 2,000. Now let's change here sum on sales value. And uh, choose back to count see now let's take this dollar sign out of here let's go to home let's let's click here on this big home sign and let's reduce these decimal cases so see guys there were 241 sales done for the segment type consumer on the category furniture on the state of california so we can see that the sales from zero to 2000 are by far the largest amount of sales done for California. We can even change this to percentage. If we, if we again click here on count of sales, go to view value settings and click here on the second tab, show value as, and here in no calculation, we show percentage of grand total and do OK. See, we now know that the consumer on furniture represents 12% of all sales and the furniture represents 20% of all sales between 0 and 2000. We can even do it a little better. Let's see the screen. Again here, on count of sales, we click on value fields, we again click on show value as, and here we choose of percentage of parent row total. Now we see that the consumer represents 55% out of the furniture 20% total. All right, very nice. What do you think? Bonus two, working with slicers. Slicers are these elements down here, and they are a sort of a better filtering capability than the default filter box down here. Why is that? Because the filter, remember when I showed you guys moments ago about that the drawback if you have two filters and you choose the first one, the second one does not get applied together, and hence you must, uh, if you keep using that way, you must look for the entries you want among all entries available regardless of the first filter. So that's really bad for this filtering ability. But slices make that relation to work in a way that if you choose one entity in one field, all other fields get reflected automatically. Let's see the screen. So here, let's clean this state filter here and see everything came dark. I'm gonna also clear here sales and now everything is free of any filter. If I choose here Alabama, see what happens? Everything got away to filter out and that those light areas here means that Alabama is on place on the south, which is correct. Alabama is on the south of the uh, US. <laughs> and uh, only these cities here belong to Alabama. So if I move down just a little, see, all these others, they don't belong to Alabama. So the filtering are working in relation one to another. This is so nice. And then you ask me, but how you got these slices there in first place? 
that's it. We come here to analyze and we click here on this button, insert a slice. Then you just need to choose which fields from your private table you want to create one of these slide boxes on the screen. I chose state, region, city, segment, so it's just a matter of coming here and click state, city, segment, what else I have, order date, so on and so forth. Let's add one of these four here because I want to show you one very important thing. Adding these four, see, they come here on the screen, this way, then you may be thinking, but how to align nicely the way you did down here? You need to first place one down here, more or less where you want, and then resize it to the size you need in order to fit. Then place the last one here, also on the on the place you want. Do the same resizing. If you want to be sharp, you need to get this number here, height. Copy it, click on the other one, and paste it. If you hold Ctrl and click in all of them together, you can do this at once. See? Now let's align. Let's click here on this align op option and choose here align to middle. And finally, let's choose distribute horizontally. In this way, they are proportionally distributed correctly along the screen. This is exactly where I down here. Finally, I don't want them to move as I change the data in my pivot table. So how to make them completely static here, completely floating over Excel. I just right click on any of them. I chose here size and properties. And here on properties, I expand it and I need to choose this option here. Don't move or size with cells. If I do this, see what happens. Doesn't matter, see, what I change on my data, see, they are static, they are not moving, all right? Very nice, this was the slices. Bonus three, work with timeline. Similar to slices, there is another dedicated element to help you play with a date range smartly. Let's see how it works. See this element down here? I created it based on order date, and if I move this range around, see, my data change. Let's say that I want to choose on 2014. So I just drag it through the year 2014 and see, these are all my 2014 data. How did I create this? I click on into the pivot table anywhere, click on analyze and click here insert on timeline. I chose order date because Excel is smart enough to only suggest me date columns, not every other column. Very nice, positive point to Microsoft. I choose order date, I do OK. And see here, this is the same timeline that I added here, just smaller. I will now position here, drag the way you want, etc. Right click on it, choose size and properties. Make sure that I choose don't move or size with cells. And it will simply become just like the one that was down here. And so let's just delete this because I have a already one created down here. And that's it guys, just play with the data range you want. Very simple, very nice. This was Timeline. Bonus 4. Using charts over your pivot tables. For charts, let's use here the pivot table 4 with these slices because the table size is smaller and easier to explain. I'll click here on Analyze and click here on Pivot Chart. I need to make sure that I click it inside the pivot table anywhere. Then, once I click here, one chart will be recommended for me. Let's use this first one. And it's, it's already created right away here for me. Same thing at any other element, I'm coming here to format chart menu. And here on metrics, I'm gonna also make sure to not move or size with cells. Then that is pretty much it. I'll add the data labels here. Here on analyze, I can choose if I want to show or not the filters that only belong to the chart. In this way, the filters that I apply here would be the ones applying directly into here. Or if I enable this, I can also apply filters directly here and see they also apply down there. So two ways to do the same thing. Then guys, whatever filter I apply, see my chart, it gets already updated automatically as I am moving my data around. So you got your chart automatically created out of a pivot table even with slices. Alright? So this was chart with pivot tables. Bonus 5. The analyze and design tab. To conclude here, folks, let's take a look on these two tabs, the Analyze one and the Design one, and see the major features that uh, these two tabs they have. Again, this tab, they only appear if you click into the pivot table. Then here in Analyze, you have the pivot table name on the left. You won't care about this if you are developing something in Excel or creating fancy stuffs. Here, 
the active field which is this one down here on the bottom right to show you how it's showing the name of it and what is doing with it it's summing in this case if i click here on field settings i can change from sum to count to average to max etc just like i show you guys now here previously then here are the slices that i already spoke about here are the time is the timeline that we already spoke about it's here on pivot table 5 refresh guys pay very attention once you create a pivot table from a ref data, pivot table creates one picture, one snapshot of that ref data. Means, if the ref data changes by any reason, because you update it, because the source got updated automatically from a external integration, etc., the pivot tables won't get refreshed automatically. Because the pivot tables are business intelligence, they are pictures from where the data was collected from. So you always must come and press this very button here if you want your pivot table to reflect the latest updated data you have. There is no way for you to overcome this. It's just the way things work, all right? So keep that in mind and be happy. <laughs> Once you click here, it will fetch the ref data and update all values automatically, all charts, all graphics, all features, everything automatically. The next button here, it's also important because several bugs happen because of this button here. How it works? If you added a new column on the extreme to left, so the beginning of your table, or the extreme to right, so the end of your table, or you added line after the end of your ref data, after you have selected the range of your pivot table, Excel will not map those new fields or new lines automatically. How Excel maps automatically? You have two ways. First, either you created the column within the range or the lines, the rows, the entries within the range or you create dynamic range. But the dynamic range only works for columns, not for lines. If you are not using dynamic range and you add new lines, you are gone. Those lines will not be incorporated automatically into your pivot table just by pressing the refresh button. So how to overcome that? Let's see the screen. If by any chance the data source for this pivot table got updated, you just need to click again on this button. It will show you from where it is taking the data. See here, in my case, I'm using dynamic range. And what is dynamic range? Means that, that I have no numbers here on columns. Means that I am retrieving whatever exists from column A to column U. So what is a static range? Static range, like this, see, I'm clicking here and doing manual range. See the range here? This is static range, from this cell to this cell. So if I go to the beginning, Ctrl Home, now Ctrl Shift Right, and Ctrl Shift Down, see, this is the range of the whole data source. If I do OK, it will work. But if I come down here and add one more entry right here on this position or below it, it will not get reflected automatically in Bible Tales. Got the idea, folks? This is very important, you must know this. Once we are done fixing your data source, here on the right, you can create the charts automatically from your pivot table, the way we just explained it. Then here, Excel recommends you to create these pivot tables out of the ref data if you want. Sometimes it's nice, sometimes it's not. It's just Excel trying to save you some time. And here on the very right are the panels that we already spoke about. The field list, see? The buttons that affect here, the pivot table and the head fields, see the filters here on the head, on the head, these are this button here about. The sign, it's very simple, it's just how the pivot table is being pressed. If you want a row header, if you want a column header, if you want a band on the row, you want a band on the columns, and here are the design of the pivot table. So this one is very simple to explain. All right, guys. Data management is definitively a great plus on your setup skills to increase a little more your chances of being promoted, better manage your business, better understand your customer, etc. Did you like this video? Found it interesting? If you have seen until here, it means that you like it, right? What about considering in subscribing to my channel? It's the best attribution that you could give me, supporting me to continue growing my small channel and posting videos like this very one here. Also, please don't forget my life. Thank you so much for watching. See you on next week.